Welcome to a bonus episode of Wall Street Wildlife. I'm Christoph Monkey Pikarski, joined by none other than Luke the Badger Hallard. Hi. My nemesis who's whooping my ass in the king of the jungle portfolio <laughs> at the moment, but this too shall pass. So right now we'd like to talk about a recent move I made for that king of the jungle portfolio challenge, which is uh, a short term investment I made in Rocket Lab. Badger, tell us about your long-term vision for this company. Who are these guys and why do you, why do you like them? So, so 10, 20, 30 years ago, if you wanted to get stuff into space, like you needed to be a government, then SpaceX came along and totally changed the equation. And now SpaceX, current private valuation, $180 billion. Uh, I'd love to be a shareholder. It's hard to become a shareholder of this company. Uh, they are now one of only two private companies in the world that are successfully reliably putting payloads into orbit and the other one of those two companies is rocket lab valuation sub three billion dollars i love the fact that these guys are so far apart on a valuation perspective but actually not so far apart on a capability perspective um rocket lab you know clearly the baby bunny against this ginormous gorilla of spacex who've got hundreds of successful launches under their belt but rocket lab are up there they're doing uh, an incredible job going after a, a different market of smaller customers that spacex aren't really going near so they've got a really clear market carved out for them i think they're going to do fantastically but i'm long rocket lab i've bought the stock you've done something a bit different though i know you bought the stock but you've also bought some options you want to tell us why you've done that sure so uh <clears throat> i am right now a bear with regard to the market in general. So I want as little permanent capital capital invested in the market as I can. So the less time I'm spending invested, the safer I feel. But at the same time, I absolutely love this company. I think in the long term, they will be a fabulous uh, position. So I'm trying to, I think I, so what I did was by the February 16th, 2024, seven dollar calls that gives me the right to buy shares at seven dollars regardless of what the price is but of course in the interim if the underlying stock goes up the value of those contracts options goes up so it was basically a short-term bet on rocket lab going up why did i do that well the technical chart showed rocket lab having a whole lot of momentum to the upside and so in general what you want to do is invest with the momentum it's it's a uh, easy metaphor to understand when you're whitewater rafting you want to be going with the stream not against it you don't want to try to be smarter than the river say so right now rocket lab is the momentum when you see it on the chart is up uh i think i got cute though got a lot a little cute because i looked at the dates and i had to choose from february and i believe the next one was april and i chose the more short-term option which was cheaper but as we know from uh previous episodes the theta decay the penalty you pay for the time as time passes starts showing up hardcore about three weeks out so that only gives me about two weeks in january for me to essentially be right the other problem is i kind of bought when you're playing some of these momentum uh games i kind of bought near the top expecting the momentum to continue going higher and the market swiftly then had five down days in a row which is what happens in short-term stuff. You kind of, I mean, you're at the mercy of larger fates. So uh, I'm thinking about potentially selling at a loss before the theta kicks in. But of course, as I was think, going through these thoughts uh, today, it had a really big up day. And tomorrow the options will be worth even more to get me back within swinging distance of it being a profitable trade again. So to be determined. But what I want our listeners to make note of is I think I got a little cute by trying to by um, getting it was a little riskier than I'd like in hindsight. I should have probably gone at least to the April's to 
completely take the theta picture out, out and pay a little bit more. You need to go back and listen to that uh, uh, theta episode that we recorded just before Christmas. Go learn from yourself. But Christoph, so you've taken a one or two month position with that option you chose. One of our subscribers asked a question about something called zero day to expiry options. And I guess you could have bought a zero DTE option on Rocket Lab. Why didn't you do that? What are they? What are they all about? Right. So just so everyone knows what they look like on paper on the screen is the symbol zero DTE, which doesn't automatically obviously translate to zero day to expiry options in, in, in your mind, but that's what they mean. So here's the thing, despite being a, sh despite buying what I feel is a short term position in rocket lab, that to me does not equate with straight out gambling. Zero DTEs are pure, you cannot convince me uh, of anything but they are going to the roulette wheel and hoping your number comes up. I, in good faith, cannot recommend anybody to use zero DTEs for any reason whatsoever if they think of themselves as investors at all. There's no exceptions to this. Just do not do that. My Listen to what I was saying about being uneasy about my February 16th options. Those, those are still, what, 40 days out, and I'm already getting quite antsy about how dangerous and risky that is. Uh, sure, I might win on that. Sure, I might lose on that. But um, I know that's playing with fire. I would never, ever go anything shorter than 30 days if I call myself an investor. And that's what we're teaching here. So when you see zero DTE, run the other way, avoid, unless you're willing to lose your, you know, uh, capital permanently for no reason whatsoever. Very good. Well, that's, uh, that's good to hear that you're not a total reckless gambler with your short term <laughs> trading positions. <laughs> <laughs> if you're audio only the uh the little fairy badger just attacked christoph <laughs> Nib nibbling at his ear all right should we wrap it up there buddy with another bonus episode of the wall street wildlife podcast if you tune in in a couple of days time christoph is going to give you a bit of a deeper dive into his thoughts on bitcoin mining and uh why something quite exciting is happening potentially in the bitcoin space right now 